Welcome back to the bluegrass on this beautiful December afternoon. I'm out with Dova. Dova is a six month old Norwegian elk hound. Uh, and somewhere around here I have a Titan, a four month old doodle. And I have uh, Hank, who is a four month old Catahoula leopard dog. Okay. Now what we're doing today is preparing for tomorrow. In the dog business, uh, there's actually a whole lot of preparing for tomorrow. And here's kind of what I mean by that. Uh, you know, when people come down, they bring me a dog, uh, dog kind of hangs out with me for a little bit of training. My program is kind of a neat program where like you sign up for a year and uh, so you do some pre-training then the dog kind of comes and hangs out with me for adventure training and socialization uh, and then the dog goes home and you have uh, you know a lot of months of uh, follow-up training to make sure that we can get the dog all the way through the adolescent period and doing well okay and all d during that time a lot of people think that being a dog trainer is all about training dogs but that couldn't be farther from the truth you know, what being a dog trainer is about is helping dogs fully integrate themselves into the lives of their owners, okay? And what I mean by that is, like, say Dova, you know, he can kind of come here and hang out with me, and we can go on big adventures, we can go pretend we're moose hunting, we can go canoeing and pretend we're on a Viking raiding party. I mean, Dova and I can have a big time because I have all day to uh, play with dogs. I have all day to pretend that I'm moose hunting or pretend that I'm a Viking or you know, whatever I want to do. At Catahoula, sometimes I'll pretend that, uh, you know, I'm a, like a settler in Louisiana or an Indian or something. I don't know. Like, I, I never lost the ability to pretend. And if you're going to be, you know, in a dog business, like, it really helps because it keeps you motivated. Every time I go out in the woods or I go out on an adventure with a different kind of dog, I try to think about, like, who were the original people that came up with that kind of dog? And what was the purpose that the dog was really bred for? And, you know, and I watch the dog interact with the environment. And it really, I don't know, it just kind of makes the day fun, okay? Uh, but like, every week, I've got to see a bunch of people. And so what I have to do in my mind is I have to think about how I'm going to structure the day when it's not just me and the dogs. I know a lot about dogs. Uh, we go to a lot of fun places. I know how to pretend. You know, I know how to be interesting to the dogs. But how am I going to prepare the dogs? you know, for being around people that uh, they're not always comfortable with dogs. They definitely don't know much about dog training, you know. And tomorrow, especially, I have three little girls coming out. And this happens to me almost every week. I'll get some big big, big batch of kids. Uh, and how old are those the children, cameraman? Three, five, and seven. Three, five, and seven. And I don't know if you've ever been around uh, a bunch of little girls uh, and puppies at the same time, but <laughs> it can be, come on, nerd, it can be... <laughs> It can be a circus, okay? And kind of what happens, the arc of, uh, of the day kind of goes like this. The kids come down and they see the puppies and they're, so, they're just super excited, you know? They want to touch everybody and hug and squeal and squall and run around. Uh, and then they kind of get tired and then they get grumpy, okay? And if you're in the dog business, you need to, if you don't have kids yourself, you better do some babysitting, okay? Because when you're training dogs for people with uh, little kids, then like if you don't know how to interact with little kids and if you don't know the arc of dealing with little kids during a work session, uh, you're going to get frustrated and you're not going to do a very good job. Okay, and you might as well just get your head around that. And so, so I have to get my head around how I'm going to structure my day tomorrow because I can't just take these little kids. Now sometimes the bigger kids, I can take them on big adventures, you know, but like three, five, and seven, the three-year-old it's going to be pretty handsy, pretty huggy, or pretty afraid, one or the other, right? Okay. The five-year-old is going to be pretty manageable. Seven-year-old, seven-year-old little girls all the way through 11 are about perfect help in the dog business, you know? So what am I going to do? I have to think about that, and I have to keep these dogs interested because certainly, you know, like uh, a three-, five-, and seven-year-old little girl can't actually make a dog mind. They can't, like, look. The dog's not going to look at them and say, oh, that, you know, that person is a, is a leader. That person, like, sets the standard for the day. So I have to go, all right, well, uh, there's going to be some little kids coming out, and I want you to stay, be interested in them. And, you know, the dog's going to be like, why would I be interested in them? And I'm going to say, oh, because I'm going to strap some clickers on them, and whenever they push that uh, clicker, you're going to get something good. I'm not even going to make it any more complicated than that. And uh, you're going to see, because we're going to roll tomorrow's footage into this video, Okay, and you're going to see the magical effect that it happens when I give little kids clickers and leashes. Okay, and for everybody out there that thinks that you can do it a different way, well, good luck.
All right. What I'm trying to do is give the kids like uh, the ability to uh, influence the dogs, right? And I'm trying to give the dogs a reason to focus on the little kids, and there just really isn't anything better than this method right here. Okay, we do it all the time. So today, even though Dova is kind of at the stage of obedience where I'm not using food work with them much anymore, okay, we're going to revisit it because I'm trying to like tap into that early memory from when he first started coming to the kennel when he was getting lots and lots of treats and then tomorrow when uh, the little kids come by then like he's gonna go oh oh Stoney doesn't give me a lot of treats anymore but look at these little kids they're all wearing clickers I know what that means okay so what we're doing here we kind of call it greasing the groove right I'm just preparing him to go into a situation tomorrow where he feels like there's something in it for him for hanging out with and uh, working cooperatively with little kids. That way I don't, you know, I'm not trying to give the little kids like leadership advice. I'm not trying to tell them to, you know, like carry themselves a certain way. You know, I'm just, I'm putting Dova in the position of looking at the little kids and trying to get the little kids to notice him, right? It works perfectly and you're gonna see how well it works when I show you this video. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just kind of come around the course a little bit and I'll be pretty lavish with my reinforcement points, looking to make sure that I have a good attitude from Dova, and I'm doing things that like, um, you know, he enjoys doing and the little kids like doing. Always a big hit with the little kids is, uh, you know, like riding the four-wheeler, okay? So most little kids nowadays, they don't get to do all the kind of fun stuff that farm kids get to do, you know? So when they come out here, I like to let them ride the four-wheeler, I like to let them uh, shoot uh, the rifle. Most time what I'll do with the little ones is I'll break them out a little BB gun or a little pellet rifle. Come on nerd. Okay. Now just in case because this happens to me a lot people that have people that have children like little children they also have parents and a lot of times they like to bring those parents with them too you know and so this is again preparing for tomorrow I know for sure I've got a couple of kind of middle-aged people I got a middle-aged mom and uh, three little kids and I'm sure a grandparent is going to get drugged into this somehow or another right so not only do I kind of got to get Dova fired up in terms of thinking about like oh like here comes kids they're wearing clickers I'm gonna get lots of treats I'm gonna figure out a way to make them happy okay I got to get them prepared for in case somebody comes down here and they're on a walker okay and for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while you'll remember that you didn't see these walkers in many of my videos back the first few years and that's because I was quite a bit younger and I didn't know so many old people <laughs> this is what you'll find out in your life as you start to know an old people <laughs> one of these <laughs> you're getting old too right so like I keep I keep wondering where all these old people are coming from that are coming down my hill and really it's the same people that I knew back in the day and <laughs> we just all got old at the same time and I don't like admitting it so I go ahead and prepare this dog for just in case somebody comes down here and maybe they have a walker, right? Okay. Now, a key issue here, right, is making sure that like like Dova is looking forward to this experience. He's not nervous with the walker, okay? He's not too awful, you know, like distracted by the other dogs. But I need the other dogs to act interested too. And you'll notice how they're kind of off doing their own thing. Come on, nerds. Come on, come on, come on. So I got to get them to come over here and be interested because like what kind of what I need to have when I have little kids especially out is I need to follow the leader effect, right? So I'll take the biggest kid, you know, or the oldest child and, and I'll put them in the front of the line and then I want, you know, like what kind of, what, what kind of, We'll kind of put each child with a dog, and I'll put, put the most mature child w with the kind of the, probably the hardest dog, and then I want everybody to fall in line. Okay, and so to grease the groove for that, what I would like to do is work one dog and reward the other two. Now this Catahoula, okay, he's off doing his own thing with his nose to the ground, okay, and so, you know, like I'm always preaching in my videos, look guys, you're getting what you buy, right? So if you buy you a houndy type dog, well, they're not going to be like, uh, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not going to be following you around super attentively all the time. Okay, so I'm going to have to work with that. So I'm going to have to probably talk to Hank. Come on, Hank. Come on. Everybody wants to see you. So I have to be a little bit more vocal. There we go. 
and I had to be a little bit more lavish with my with my praise and probably a little bit more generous with my rewards here. Oh my gosh, look at these good dogs. Come on, come on. Some of the different kinds of dogs, like I can walk around and talk to the camera, you know, and like I don't have to like pay much attention to the dogs. I don't have to reward them very much. But these hounds, uh, you know, and I know everybody will say, well, he's kind of a herding dog, hound slash whatever, okay. He acts very houndish, right? Uh, and which is funny because Dova is a kind of a hound too, but not in the way that we would normally think about it here in the States. And I have a nice little video where I took them for a hike the other day where you can kind of see the difference between how two dogs basically bred for very similar activities. Uh, they manifest that behavior in different ways, you know, because they have different mental and physical characteristics. Okay, now this doodle, it just kind of hangs out and does whatever. Go on through there. Very nice. Oh, that's a good dog. You're very good. Okay. Trying to, trying to, trying to get them fired up here. Come on, Hank, get up here. You're a good boy. Come on, Titan. Oh my gosh, you fell off, but you're a good dog. Oh, that's good dogs. And now when I'm, when I'm working with the children, I'm going to have to do the same thing. I'm going to have to be like, come on, guys, you can do it. Very nice. You got to lead by example. You know, you got to be what you want to see. So if I want excited, engaged children, then I got to be excited and I got to be engaged. You know, I got to make it like, like I'm fun to, like fun to hang out with. One of the things people really don't understand about doing uh, food work with the dog, reward-based training, is like how the food is presented is very important. Uh, who's presenting the food is also very important. Think about going out to eat, right? If you went out to eat with somebody that's really cool to hang out with, then that's a great meal. If you go out to eat to the same place, but with somebody that's not very fun to hang out with, the meal's not so great. If you go out to eat and you have an awesome server, food tastes a little better. If you go out to drink and you have an awesome bartender, the drinks taste a little better. If you have a server, they just kind of come out, throw your plate down, like here's your food. It messes it up, right? So when you're when you're a dog trainer, oh my gosh, come on guys, you gotta be a little exciting. You gotta get down here and make it like make it interesting. And so not just make it interesting for the dogs because some dog trainers are good at that. Oh my gosh, very good dogs, they're very good dogs. But you gotta make it interesting for the people because if the people aren't interesting to the dogs, then the dog's just gonna pay attention to you as the interesting dog trainer. And that has happened to me a lot in the past where like, I would try to hand the leash off to the dog's owner and the dog didn't wanna leave me, you know? So, so we really have to work on putting the dogs uh, with lots of different people and teaching the people, oh, let me see that leash dog, and teaching the people how to be interesting and teaching the dog that it's okay to be interested in people other than me and Charlotte and George and the cameraman. Oh, look at this good dog. He's a very good dog. Oh my gosh. So I talked to him. Very, oh, and that's a good dog. And you're a good dog. Very good dogs. Okay, come on. Very good. You can do it. You can do it. Very good dogs. Oh my gosh. Oh, let's go a little faster. Come on, come on, Hank. You're a good dog. Come on, come on. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, now Hank's kind of a little small, so we had to help him up here just a little bit, but I can reward him for making an effort. Very nice. Good. Okay, you guys wait up there for a second. Oh, very good dogs. Oh, that's very good dogs. And there's a reward for you, and there's a reward for you. Oh, my gosh. Okay, come on, come on. I always understand that getting down off of stuff is scarier than getting on stuff. Oh, the kids love this one. They love to get up here and try to make these dogs turn these little circles. Very nice. Okay, and then, this is where, stay. This is where we always have trouble with the kids, trying to get the dogs just to stay still for a little while. Because remember I was telling you we want to be the change that we want to see, right? So if we're trying to get a dog to be calm and the kids are super excited and super fidgety, then the dogs don't want to stay, right? So we'll work on this a lot today. We'll probably be pretty lavish with our rewards. Very nice, very nice. Stay there, nerds. Now we don't care in particular if they stand or sit or they get tired and they kind of lay down. We just want them to stay there until uh, I come over there and let them go. 
you know, and you can see how Hank, he's, you know, he gets a little fidgety, especially when the wind's blowing or some leaves going around here. You see his nose. Whenever the wind is blowing, this dog's nose is starting to, you know, like investigate, see what that wind's bringing to him, and then he goes off looking for it. But that's pretty good for four-month-old puppies. I like that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now, pro tip for you, you know, moms and dads or, or dog trainers out there that got to deal with little kids. If the kids are acting too fidgety and the dogs aren't paying attention, uh, have them run some sprints, right? So we'll come out here. Come on, dogs. Oh my gosh. You're very good dogs. Oh my gosh. Very good. Very good dogs. Oh, oh you're very good dogs. You're very good dogs. Try to get away from them. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you're very good dogs. You really model the behavior, right? Like you want the dogs to be excited, you want them to be engaged, and you want the children to be excited and be engaged, right? So you use, like if you're losing focus on your boring stuff, your healing, your sitting, your downing, whatever it is that you're working on, like don't get, uh, don't get bossy with the kids because that doesn't work. And don't get bossy with the dogs because then the kids feel like you're being unfair to the dogs and then you kind of you kind of lose their focus, right? So if you start to lose focus, just go out in the field. Oh my gosh, come on dogs. Oh my gosh, come on. Run around a little bit. Very good. Very good. Come on, come on. Titan, come on. Oh, that's good dogs. That's good dogs. Okay. Now, so that's my basic plan. Bring kids out tomorrow. I'm going to throw some clickers on them. We're going to go super heavy with the reward work on the course. And whenever I start feeling like I'm losing their focus, we're going to come out in the field and we're going to do some sprints. Uh, and if I don't feel like I'm doing fo losing focus, which I might not, because these are three really good little girls, we'll probably go out back and we'll go on a hike. And uh, maybe I'll try to get the kids to go hide. If I can talk their mom into it, go hide in the woods. And we'll see if these dogs will follow them around and, you know, chase them and look for them and stuff. Okay. But either, either way, it ought to be an interesting video. And this may, I don't know who it's going to be interesting to. Maybe to parents, maybe to other dog trainers who are not, you know, they don't have children of their own. So they're looking for some, you know, pro tips on training dogs and children. Uh, but uh, hopefully it'll work out. Like I said, it was going to work out. And uh, we'll have a good day tomorrow. All right. I'll see you all tomorrow. Very good dogs. Right. So we're trying to do a line, and I said follow the leader, right? Well, Aria jumped right, <laughs> right to the front of the line. So Aria is the leader. She's going to lead Uncle Stoney. She's decided that I'm, uh, I need a little help, extra help. So you going to be the line leader? You could be the line leader. Go ahead. So you're going to go first, and then I'll follow you, and then your little sisters will follow me. Ready? Now what are we doing? We're going to do the course. Then we're going to run out in the field and we're going to do some recalls. And uh, for this to work really well, we have to all be doing a lot of rewarding and we have to seem super happy and energetic. Now, while we're happy and energetic, dogs are going to be a little wild, but they'll calm down after, after a few minutes. All right, you ready? Go. Okay, now, so, all right. Now, so Uncle Stoney's going to take back over. Now, you follow back in, in here. <laughs> Okay, so this is what I was telling you guys. When you're working with little kids, uh, there's a lot of factors in play, right? You got the dogs, you don't know how the dogs are going to mind, uh, you don't know how the little children are going to mind. So patience uh, is really a virtue here. And remember, you have to model what you want to see. So no matter how crazy this looks in the beginning, right, I've got to be really calm and I've got to be really confident and I just have to, you know, keep circling back until I get it like I want it. All right, so we're going to start again. Come on, you follow me and then you guys follow each other. All right, let's make a big circle so that we can get in line. So I'm going to go, and then Aria comes next, and then you with Hank. There you go. Now you, hey, make a big circle. Big circle. Come circle all the way, and then get behind all your sisters. There you go. All right. Now we're going to be walking. There we go. And on every obstacle, guys, we're going to click and treat. Okay. Perfect. And you guys can click and treat back there. Very nice. And if you have trouble working your clicker, then you can just treat. Okay, all right, now here we go. Follow the, follow the leader style. Make a big circle so we can get up here on our exam table. Okay, everybody will probably bunch up here a little bit, but that's okay. Now, the reason they're all bunching up is because they all want to come up here because they're used to me giving them treats. So when I click, you guys all click and give them a treat. 
So what we're doing here basically is we're making the dogs understand that they don't all have to rush over here and get next to me. I'm not the most important person in the world. Always here what we're trying to do is we're making the dogs understand that they can have a lot of you know awesome relationships with a lot of people. Your dog does not need to focus on you all the time when you're out. The dog should have a rich life just like you should go out and have a rich life. Come on, up up, very nice, up up, very nice. Perfect, perfect. Let's wait on your sisters. And that's okay if you need to go around one. All right, very nice. And try to get that one right there. Try, try, to get, try to get this one right here, if you can. Or not, it's not important. Okay. <clears throat> what is important here is not the objective performance, but that we're all engaging in mutually beneficial behavior, right? So. Like I'm learning, I'm learning how to influence children, the children are learning how to influence the dogs, and the dogs are learning how to socialize and be influenced. And you're gonna have, you're gonna have some little things like this happen, right? You're gonna have, like somebody's gonna maybe get out of line a little bit. If that happens, oh, you know, just take a moment and, uh, you know, work things out. Very nice, very good. Now always like have in your mind that as long as you keep at it, and this is the same whether you're just raising children for doing children's stuff or you're raising children to do dog training stuff or you're just raising puppies. If you're patient, you give them some slack maybe. If you're patient, good. Then things will start to work out. And then the great thing is, is once the things start to work out, you'll gain confidence. So our first trip around the course is gonna be our toughest trip around the course. Okay, let's all try to give a little reward, get caught up. <laughs> there you go, very nice. All right, now we have a straggler back there. Okay. Stay. So I'm going to come back here. You guys wait for me. I'm going to get your sister lined out. So always, you know, always be patient enough to take, oh, and uh, come back for your stragglers. There you go, baby. Very nice. Perfect. Perfect. Very good. Okay. And then now, so right here, guys, we might have a little trouble with this tire. So don't get, uh, don't get frustrated if you have a little trouble with the tire. The tire is the hardest obstacle on the course. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead, come back here and help the straggler. Perfect, that's great. And then just reach around here. There you go. Very good, okay. Then I'll come back and get in front of you guys. <clears throat> Very good. Now I'm gonna let everybody kind of catch up. Very nice. Now look guys, when we go to go through the tunnel, we'll all have to let go of our leashes and then pick our dogs up on the other side of the tunnel, okay? Ready? So we're gonna come down through here. Up. Good. There you go, up. There you go. Then we come back and pick our dog up. I'm gonna come back here and help your sister. Very nice. There you go, take your dog. Perfect, perfect, awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, great. Very nice. Now go ahead and pick up your leash again. Perfect. That's awesome. All right. All right. So now we're going to do it one more time, girls, and we're going to do it seamlessly. <laughs> Maybe not seamlessly. <laughs> we're going to do it just a little bit better. Okay. All right. Here, you guys come back and get in line. Let's show, we're going to show the whole world how this uh, concept works. <laughs> come on. There you go, okay. Now come get right in the back of the line and then now we're gonna do it, guys, and uh, it's gonna look awesome. Are y'all ready to be awesome? Yeah. Okay, all right, ready? One, two, three, let's go. Up. All right, now we're gonna come up here. Very nice. We're gonna click and treat. Very nice. Perfect. Very good. Now we're gonna come off of the dog walk. We're going to make a big circle and come up on our exam table. Up, up. 
Very nice. We're going to wait till everybody gets caught up. Perfect. Perfect. And tight and caught up. And now everybody's going to click and treat. Perfect. And if you can't get your, if, you, if your hand's cold and you can't push your clicker, just give them a treat. Very nice. Okay. Now we're going to go over two jumps. It's going to be hup and hup. Very nice. Then we're going to swing around and we're going to come up on the dog walk. And we're going to pause on the dog walk and we're all going to get caught up and we're going to click and treat. Good. That's, that's, that's okay if she's a little bit ahead. Everybody caught up? Did Hank fall off? That's okay. <laughs> uh, all right, wait right there. All right, so I'm going to get us caught up. Oh. All right, now we're going to make a big circle. We're going to come up on the kayak. Very nice. Ah. Good, and we'll all get caught up. Now once we get caught up, we're going to click and treat. <laughs> okay, you're going to cross the platform over the water. Very nice. Now right here is where we had a little bit of problem before. Okay. So we're going to try to make this seamless. Now, yeah, let me go ahead and help you get around the arc of that. Right now, okay. Now we're all in good shape. Now, off the platform, and then let's follow this little trail. You ready? Very nice, easy. Very good, perfect. Perfect. Ah, Hank's getting a little excited. That's okay, he'll pick it up. Up, up. Very nice. Now we'll all catch up here on the steps and give our dogs a treat. Good. All right. Now through the tire seamlessly so that we look like dog training experts. Very nice. Let the straggler catch up. Perfect. Let's wait on your little sister. <laughs> hey, you're going to get it this time. That's awesome. Need a little help? Wait. There we go. And then let's just switch hands here. Now you've got it. Okay, guys, we're almost done. Very nice. Okay. Everybody in the line? Very good. Perfect. <laughs> All right, easy on the way down. Now we're going to go in between these cones. Very nice. Perfect. Now we got one straggler going her own way, but that's okay. She's a free spirit. That's okay. You can go ahead and go through there. Go ahead. That's great. Sometimes, you know, lines are not for you. I understand that. I respect that. Okay, now we're going to come up here. We're going to have our dog sit and stay for just a moment. So everybody put your dog up there and tell him to stay. stay. Oh, Dover's over here by his mom. He's trying to. So you guys have heard me talk about in the other videos the divorced parent problem, right? You know what it's like if, you, if, if one parent says you can stay up late and drink beer and the other tells you to go to bed because you got to go to church in the morning, right? Well, so as we're walking by, Dova's mom, she's the beer drinking parent, right? And she keeps making goo-goo eyes at uh, Dova, so he's running off the course, messing up my video. All right. Okay. Up, up. Oh, let's. There we go. All right. Now we're all gonna walk away. You guys all walk away. Tell your dogs to stay there. Stay. There you go. Now theoretically, I don't know if it'll happen or not, but theoretically those dogs should stay. Okay. And then after the boring part of the staying. Good. Now we've got all our formal boring school work out of the way, so what are we going to play next? Chase. We're going to go work on our recalls. Okay, so these dogs are doing great. So we're going to take their leashes off of them. Very nice. 
Very nice. Oh my gosh, you're very good dogs. Very nice and very nice. Okay, you're fine animals. Okay, let's run out here and uh, play chase. So what we're gonna work on now, guys, is uh, like running around in field with little kids and rewarding the dogs for playing chase, but playing chase in a, you know, nice uh, manner. All right, come on, guys. Hey, dogs, y'all just do what I do. Come on, come on, dogs. Okay, so I'll let them chase me for a minute, right? Then I'll give everybody a treat. Good. Come on. And then hey, you guys run around, and when they when they when they when they catch you, give them a treat. Don't go too far. Stay over this way a little bit. There you go. Now, what you'll start to notice in the beginning stages, hey, you guys kind of come over here where the camera can see you. In the beginning stages, the dogs will, uh, like, all want to hang out with me. That's because I have a better credit rating than these little children. You know, the dogs know I pay a lot, so they have to do a little clicking and treating and a little bit of loving and playing to get the dogs to think they're super interesting also. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so... All right, so watch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run, and then I'll stop, and then y'all do the same thing I do. Ready? Come. Oh, my gosh, very good dogs. So I give everybody a treat. Very nice. And then, okay, now, now I'll be quiet, and then you guys run backwards and uh, do the same thing. Just right, right through there. Oh, okay, that's fine. Now you got to talk to them real excitedly. Okay, here, you guys come up here so the camera can see you. Run towards me. Be really excited. Very nice. See, I don't want these dogs to go to a soccer game or to go to the park uh, uh, or go to some other type of social activity and see kids running around and that be their first uh, experience with it. You know, I mean, the key to dog training really is learning by doing. And so every day I strive to make sure that I put dogs in situations where they can have positive interactions with lots of different people. And once they kind of build out their social set, then they don't have to do negative attention seeking things like barking or jumping or, or pulling on the leash so much, you know. And hey, listen, and don't just when you're doing like training with your with with, with children, uh, don't just tell them what to do. I mean, that's the worst. I see parents come out here and they're like telling the children what to do. Hey, show them, lead by example, be the change that you want to see. It, it helps the kids stay fired up and it helps the dogs stay fired up. Dogs, very good dogs. And then y'all just, whatever I say, y'all say. Okay, ready? Let's go, dog. That's right. Ready? Let's go, dogs. There you go. Good. Ready? Fine animals. Come on, dogs. And we'll do it one more time. Ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Good dogs. Good dogs. Now we're going forward. Ready? Let's go. Come on, dogs. Come on, dogs. Very nice. Now, you guys got whistles with you? Good. That's an opportunity to sell your mom some whistles. Come on, come on. Very nice. All right, ready? One more time. Let's go. Very nice. Okay. So now I've knocked out my formal school work, the boring stuff, and I kind of took an edge off the kids because kids, when they first come out, they get really excited about the dogs. Uh, and uh, we got some recalls in. We know all the dogs are coming pretty good. So now we're going to head out walk. Uh, we're going to head out back, and we're going to take a walk in our pre-adventure area. Should be fun. You guys ready to go on a little hike? Yes. Okay, all right. All right, uh, now you're getting a little insight into Uncle Stoney's non-OSHA compliant world. Okay, come on, Charlotte. Okay, that's good. All right, you guys can get off and we'll take a little walk. <laughs> um, we're just gonna go, we'll go uh, make the loop around. Yeah, it's fine. All right, so here we go. We got some minions 
we got Charlotte. Charlotte is uh, the mentor for the minions, right? We got Annie, who's a mentor for these puppies. And uh, then we have some adults around here who are trying to stay out of the way. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to. So what happens is uh, all the adults, they don't ever want to be on the video. But the dogs, uh, the little kids, they like being on the videos. Okay, guys, so we're going to go this way. Dun, 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 dun. Actually, cameraman, just pan around and see. Look at all these adults. They're all trying to stay. We're, put, we're, we're putting them on YouTube anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. That's good. Okay, you can get back here with him, these little, little guys. Okay, so now we're going to walk, and all we're going to do is every so often, we're going to call the dogs back to us, and uh, we're, we're going to kind of implement the same basic training strategy. So we'll call the dogs, we'll... we'll here dogs, here dogs, come on. We'll reward them for coming and checking in. Very nice, very nice, okay. And then periodically, you guys can take off running and try to get the dogs to chase you. Yeah, you can, yeah, go ahead. There you go, and then run back through the trees here and come back to me. Can you see them? Every man with one's down. Here dogs, come on, come on. I'll do it with you guys. Oh my gosh, come on dogs. Those are very smart dogs. Oh, those are very smart dogs. Come on, you got to talk like me. Oh, get excited. Oh my gosh, very excited dogs. Run through the woods. Come on, come on dogs, run through the woods. Oh, and there's Titan. Let's, let's let Titan catch up. Oh my gosh, Titan's a smart boy. He's a good boy. Oh my gosh. And out of the woods we go. Very nice. And listen, the more interesting you make yourself, the better the dogs are going to be about coming back to you, right? You know, don't be a don't be old sourpuss when you're out on your walks. Very nice. Okay. Uh, now you swing up that way, cameraman, because of where the sun is. All right, come on, Aubrey. Very good dogs. Very good children. You some fine children. Very nice. Okay. Now you know what we're gonna do, cameraman, is we're gonna we're gonna pan around here and we're gonna have these adults run down the hill and uh, see if they can get the dogs to chase them. You ready? So go ahead and back up through there. <laughs> All right, hey, are you guys ready to watch uh, your parents try to be interesting to the dogs? Okay. All right. So we got us a, we got some fine adults, some fine children. Uh, now, you guys are going to have to make yourselves interesting, right, and get these dogs to follow you. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Come on, talk it up. Be exciting. Hey, you know what's going to be funny is when they get to the bottom of the hill, I'm going to make them run up the hill. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, champs. Let's go all the way down the hill. Try not to fall. I don't have that kind of insurance. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Perfect. All right, now here comes the tough part. You guys got to run up the hill. All right, let's go. Let's go, champs. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, come on, let's go. Let's go. There you go. All right. That's good. That's good. But to keep, hey, we got to make it interesting. Back down the hill. Back down the hill, guys. Let's go. Let's go, champs. Down the hill, down. Where y'all going? Back down the hill. We're losing one. one we've lost one over here. <laughs> Now, hey, listen, you got to keep your enthusiasm level high even if you're getting fatigued because you guys want your dogs to mind when they're fatigued, right? All right, now back up the hill. Come on, come on, good pace. Good pace. Let's go. Excitement is contagious. Let's go, champ. 
Let's go, champ. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Perfect. Be the change you want to see. That's awesome. All right, let me round up my minions. Minions, come on. All right, parents, I will give you guys a break. So we'll trade positions with you. Come on, minions. Following the leader, the leader, the leader. Following the leader, wherever he may go. <laughs> ta-da, 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 ta-da. A minion is down. A minion is down. Very nice. Very good dogs. Very good minions. Okay, now we have lost some dogs. Let's see if we can round them back up. Who are we missing? We're missing Dover and Titan. Oh, I think Spencer's up there with your mom and dad, too. Probably, probably Dover's mom is up there giving them treats. <laughs> <laughs> They're not coming. Hey, come on, parents! <laughs> it's like herding cats. Like, listen, I mean, being a dog trainer is like herding cats. Come on, Dover, you can do it. Very nice. Everybody give Dover a treat. Tell him that you're happy that he showed up. That's awesome. Very good. Oh, and here comes Titan. Titan's a good boy. Titan's a very good we got one down. That's why I brought the four-wheeler in case I had to medevac one of these guys. All right, cameraman, we're going to go do the brush pile challenge. You guys up for the world-famous brush pile challenge? Well, hello, Spencer. How are you doing? All right. Okay. All right, minions. Let's go attack the brush pile. Yeah, we got a bunch of ways. Up the hill's hard. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it's worth it in the end because, like, your dog will be tired. And guess what a tired dog is? A good dog. Very nice. Dog training is simple, guys. But your whole life is simple, really. You know, show up on time, every time. Do what you're asked. Nothing extra, nothing less. Very nice. Okay. World famous brush pile challenge in full effect. All right. Who can, who can make it to the top of Uncle Stoney's world famous brush pile without falling? Yeah, it's hard. Let me hold your hand. Now, this is a perfect example of like why you need to get out and do this kind of stuff with your dog. Because see how like like see how these little minions are struggling a little bit with getting up on this brush pile? Oh well when I grew up, nobody would have had trouble with this brush pile. <laughs> you know, we would have had a big hole dug in the middle of it and we would have been making a fort out of it. You know. Very good. Come on, Dova. Very good dogs, very nice. So, guys, when you're out doing your dog training, we want it to be a 360 degree win. We want you to have a dog that minds well. We want you to have a dog that enjoys its day. We want you to enjoy your day. And if you have children, or if you have access to some children, you know, help them realize their full potential also. You know, like these kids are gonna leave here today knowing that they can do things that they didn't know they could do before they came and hung out with Uncle Stoney. They're gonna be expert dog tr trainers. They're gonna be expert brush pile challenge conquerors. Very nice. Gonna have a lot of confidence. Oh, and they're gonna leave here with a can-do attitude. You know, very nice. Perfect. Look at Hank, he's being a good boy. Very nice. Okay. Very you are going to fall, but that's okay, because falling falls into the category of learning by doing. Let's keep going. 
<laughs> well, there's, there's no, turn around so that everybody can see you. All right, these guys have conquered the world famous brush pile challenge. Okay, now we're gonna head back down the brush pile. Okay, Charlotte, following the leader, guys. Hey, we're going following the leader, and we're gonna follow Charlotte right down. Move Hank, let me move Hank out of the way. Move out the way, doggy. Move out the way. Move out the way. Very nice. All right, Charlotte, help this minion. Very nice. Perfect. Got it. Perfect. Yep, you are going to fall. In life, you're going to fall, and you know what you do when you fall? You just get up, dust yourself off, and get ready for another adventure. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, cameraman, you can swing around there. Now, adults, uh, you guys are not going on the brush pile challenge because they have too much access to uh, lawyers. And, uh, <laughs> and building good proprioception is something that has to be done uh, when you're kind of young. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to walk down this hill here. All right. And then we're going to go through the woods a little bit. I mow the paths in circles so that if a dog comes out here and they go to run away from me, they'll run in a circle and then I'll be there and they're like, wow, you know, they're stony. He's just like Jesus. He's always watching. Yep. Very nice. <laughs> yep, yep, you're slipping on that. Okay, that, that's just a, that's a way to learn a lesson. You learn to be careful about where you put your feet. Okay, Charles, you're bringing up the rear here. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll walk up here and count the dogs, make sure we have everybody. Very nice. Very good. No, Charlotte found it. What did you get? Moss. Ooh, wow, that's neat moss. <laughs> okay, you can just kind of circle up there, cameraman. All right, well, listen, guys. Uh, that's what it's like to get ready for just another day in a dog training business, right? That's what it's like to go out and go hiking or adventuring with a bunch of kids and little dogs, you know. You, uh, every day, just do the same thing. Try to think about what you're going to do tomorrow. Try to think about what you're going to do next week, next month, next year. And, uh, you know, start planning and, and integrating those ideas into your dog training, right? And then get out and have a lot of adventures with as many people as you can. And before you know it, you're going to have an awesome dog that's ready to do just about anything. And the great thing uh, ab about that kind of training is that whenever your dog comes into contact with people, whether they're 8 years old or 80 years old, it's going to be 360 degree win. Okay? We want everybody to be better off. We want the dog to be better off. We want you as the owner to be better off. We want everyone you come in contact to be better off. Okay? And uh, that's what good dog training looks like. All right. So I'll see you guys next week.